Okay, so I was actually wearing this sweatshirt at work. The one that I wear in like every single video. And this guy comes up to me and he's like, hey, why does your shirt say Berkeley, but it's Stanford colors? And then before I can say anything, my manager goes, oh, it's because she wanted to go to Stanford, but she got into Berkeley instead. Nobody said it was easy. So funny story about this sweatshirt, I was actually stopped from entering at Crossroads once because I was wearing the sweatshirt. So there's a person who stands at the front of Crossroads and checks your Cal ID before you enter. And before I even showed her my Cal ID, when she saw my sweatshirt, she was like, wait, you're not allowed in here. Okay, well, anyways, guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys who are new here, what the hell, Megan? Why is your introduction so unnecessarily long? Are you that into yourself? Your name has to appear five times on the screen in five different fonts. I basically make videos on whatever I want, whenever I feel like it. It's officially day 1799 XCD day of COVID-19 quarantine? Is it Monday? Is it Tuesday? Is it Thursday? Is it tomorrow? Is it yesterday? I have no idea because I'm losing track of the days here. But I was thinking, what type of video can I make without leaving my house? Because I've been sitting in my room every day, just me, myself, and I. I've been reminiscing on my past and future. Wait, you can't even reminisce on your future. I was thinking I should make a video on my entire bioengineering degree at UC Berkeley in however long this video ends up being. Okay, so for those of you already following my life, you probably know this. And for those of you who are yet to follow my life, I studied bioengineering at UC Berkeley and I technically finished all my degree requirements in three and a half years, so a semester early. I would recommend not doing this unless you know that coronavirus is going to hit your last semester of school. Yeah, so before I get into this, I should probably explain my motivation behind studying bioengineering and why did I choose it at Berkeley. So every time I tell people I majored in bioengineering, they always ask me, hey that's really cool what is that exactly and i'm like you know good question so directly from the uc berkeley bioengineering homepage, what is bioengineering bioengineering is a system that applies engineering principles of design and analysis to biological systems and biomedical there you go. When it came down to choosing majors, um, in high school, I was really into biology. And then I was talking to my parents about it. And my dad said, hey, why don't you spice things up and major in bioengineering instead? And I was like, fuck it. Sure, I like spicy things. When it came down to choosing what school I was going to go to, I mean, both my parents went to Berkeley and my older brother did eeks at Berkeley. So, hashtag go bears. Let's pull this shit up. All right, it's in the folder titled Cal. Very self-explanatory. Boom, there it is. Folder for every semester. I have Cal Fresh 1, Cal Fresh 2, Cal Soft 1, Cal Soft 2. Oh, who's the genius who came up with this naming system? Cal Fresh 1, what did I take? I took Chem 1A. Oh my goodness, Chem 1A. All I can recall about Chem 1A is, fuck. Okay, so Chem 1A is general chemistry and I happened to take it with these two lovely professors who some of you guys may know. Hello everyone to your first week of general chemistry. We are Mr. and Mrs. Head Gordon. Today we'll be covering what is an electron? What is an electron? Welcome to your second week of general chemistry. Today we'll be solving Schrodinger's equation to derive the energy eigenvalues of an infinite square well. I was just guessing at numbers and figures. What even is a Diffy Q? Let's go down a prettier and lighter road. Math 53 or multivariable calculus. 
So basically this semester that I took it, there were two professors teaching it. The first one was called Edward Frankel and the second one was called John Steele. So the reason why everybody wanted Frankel was because he made some sex tape video or whatever that was super popular. So everyone wanted Frankel, but I got stuck with John Steele. What a guy. I remember it was day one of class, Dwinnell 155, a classic room. I showed up and there is this guy just mumbling on the board. Hello. Hello everyone, my name is John Steele. Today we'll be covering Green's theorem. It is a theorem about finish the proof in the book. The other class I took was Bio E10, so that's basically introduction to bioengineering for bioengineers. Um, and it was super chill because there are no midterms. So basically, if you're not an idiot you should pass. I mean, by default, by getting into the school, you're technically not an idiot. So everyone in the class should pass, theoretically. And then the last class that I took that semester was art and history representation in Americas. And I basically took this class because I needed an American cultures requirement for my degree. I was lying in bed the other night at like 3 a.m. and I was wondering why can't I fall asleep? And I was like, oh wait, maybe it's because I took a double shot espresso at 10 p.m. <sighs> so freshman year semester two, I took physics 7a, so general physics for scientists and engineers. So this is the usual general physics bullshit. Oh yeah? So you claim you understand a simple pulley system? Now what if we strung together a hundred revolving pulley atwood systems with friction because there's an earthquake? And oh yeah, did I mention? There's no gravity in our system. Yay. Math 54, so that's linear algebra and differential equation. I took this class with a professor called James Sethian. What's up guys? Welcome to Math 54. My name is James Sethian. I actually haven't taught this class in over 20 years, so I'll be reviewing the material right along with you guys. Slavic languages and literature, so basically English requirement, but only for Russian literature. Why I took that class? I have no idea. It was supposed to be easy. Was it easy? It was literally the punishment and crime in Crime and Punishment. I found a paper that I wrote in that class. All right, all right. This is the concluding sentence of my first paragraph. The novel, comma, comprised of major scenes fundamentally rooted in theology and scattered with religious references, comma, is a microcosm for the universal truth that which Doskovy studies of whether faith is the backbone of both passion and rationality. Questions of science. Last class that semester was Chem 3A General Organic Chemistry, but I took it with Professor Volhart. So the thing is about Volhart is that he webcast his lectures. Webcast is basically code for, oh, I'm gonna watch this webcast later which is code for, oh shoot, it's two days before my midterm. I have 26 webcasts I have to catch up on. Let's hack YouTube to turn on our speed to 10X. So after freshman year that summer, I published two books that are for sale on Amazon. And I got really active on this writing platform called Medium. And I started writing a lot that summer. Sophomore year, M3B, there's not really much to say another semester of not understanding NMR. Until today, those NMR graphs really stumped me. Filling out the pre-lab 10 seconds before you walk to your four hour lab. Literally every time I came out of lab, I felt like I was being reincarnated. All right, CS61A, an infamous class at Berkeley. If Berkeley calls something an introductory course, so for example, CS61A, introductory course in computer science, that's basically code for you're not going to survive this class unless you've been coding since you could barely walk, have both parents working in tech in Silicon Valley, and it's in your blood to become a SWE. OE 103, but what I really liked about this class was that it mathematically explained every concept in chemistry that we basically ever learned. A huge mic drop for this class was when we proved PV equals NRT, the ideal gas law. I mean, since we were in high school, 
honors chemistry, gen whatever chemistry you took, we always learned PV equals NRT. This was like the F equals AM of physics. This was the link list of programming. Like this was the fundamental, but we always just accepted it. We never knew mathematically why PV equals NRT is real. Are you saying PV equals NRT really fast? Puff nerd. Wait, why does my hair look enormous right now? It looks like a raccoon is growing out of my head. I just pulled up my schedule from second semester sophomore year and holy shit how did i have time to take a shit bio 1a general biology it was really cool because this class one of the professors was Doudna. Doudna basically invented this super cool thing that is basically the machine learning of biology it's called crispr <laughs> Honestly, when I first heard of CRISPR, I thought it was the drawer in the fridge that keeps your salad crisper. But the tests, I remember they were in 50 minutes, you had 16 multiple choice questions. So as soon as you saw mitochondria, you better bubble and see. It's the powerhouse of the cell super quickly and move on. So while we're on the topic of general biology, I'll go into the lab. This was by far the worst class I've taken in my entire life. Like, I'm not even saying that to be dramatic, but this class was written in hell. Describe this class in two words. It's anally ridiculous. This was the general format of its midterms. We're gonna have choices A through J. So it's like all of the above. Is it B and C? Is it B, C, D, and E? Or F, G, H? AIJ. So physics 7b is basically the second half of physics for scientists and engineers. So this focused on electric fields, magnetism, aka more suffering in Lacan. Bioengineering 104. Biological transport phenomena. <coughs> what does that mean? Stuff flows and you can look at it in a very intellectual way. Every week we would have a lab and in every lab you had to model some fluid dynamic simulation with this amazing piece of technology called comsol do i know how to use comsol today um and then that summer between sophomore and junior year i interned at nasa which was out of this world and some astronauts went to outer space i remember coming back to school that, from that summer and feeling so much more intellectually superior I had to load my schedule that semester with five classes probably spent the most amount of hours in main stacks this semester like literally when i finished berkeley i went home and i had my doctor run a panel of tests on me to make sure i was alive and the results came back that i'm super low in vitamin d it's because sunlight doesn't reach an underground library. This is literally prescribed vitamin D pills that are so high in concentration of vitamin D that you can't find them over the counter. Just when I finish taking all of them and my vitamin D levels are back to functioning, coronavirus comes in and shelter in place is ordered and now my vitamin d levels are dropping again bioengineering 100 all engineering students have to take this ethics class in order to graduate i mean i guess it's important for engineers to be ethical i guess we have to make devices that actually work i literally think elizabeth holmes is the inspiration behind this degree requirement i mean the only thing ethical about this class was how honest we were with our clicker attendance. Chem 135 is another one of my favorite classes in all of Cal because it explained all the principles of biology in our body but through an organic chemistry lens. And there were three midterms in this class. For all the arrow diagram, mechanisms flying all over my page. I was, I like, I was no joke sweating after every Chem 135 midterm. Also one of my favorite classes at Berkeley because I got to learn an entire class devoted and dedicated to something that I'm super passionate about, drugs. Physics 137A, which is an upper division quantum mechanics class for physics majors. And you may be wondering why I'm taking this class as a non-physics major. And I'm wondering the same thing. My message to you is you should do what scares you and what challenges you if you feel like it. And if you're willing, Despite all the noise and discouragement that 
and everyone else is telling you if you're willing to get your ass roasted because you feel like it then the journey is worth it my spring semester scheduled junior year bioengineering 101 this was a pretty cool class it built on bioengineering 105 that i took the previous semester making our useless knowledge a little bit more useful engineering 115 which is a tissue engineering lab this is when i truly discovered that i do not like wet lab because m195 I told myself, never again am I ever going to take a class taught by anyone with the last name Head Gordon ever again. Okay, now brace yourself because I'm going to say something really shocking. I enjoyed the class. <laughs> Believe in anything, guys. We're going to get over the coronavirus. Okay, now that your socks are knocked off, put them back on. I wasn't really in the mindset of learning this last semester, but I remember thinking to myself, you know what, I gotta do something different. I gotta make sure my last semester at Cal stands out from the rest because I'm never going back. Like if I'm gonna end my semester at Cal with a bang, it's by joining the boxing team. Duh. Next thing I know, I'm on the 51B headed to the RSF for boxing tryouts for two weeks straight every day i got my ass roasted because i just came back from summer where i was sitting all day doing computational chemistry research all of a sudden i went from that to running two miles 100 burpees let's just say i wasn't surprised when i got the email and it said we're sorry to say you didn't make it and i was like all right it's fine i'm i'm not cut out to be the next rocky or some other famous boxing name. I'll come up with something else that'll make my last semester at Cal exciting. So I was like, you know what? I'll make a YouTube channel. Nobody.